We're going to start today's Reddit post off today with a little humor. This was posted in the Equestrian subreddit, and this is titled Grounds for Divorce. This was a blog post that says, Ryder divorces her husband after he sells her collection of matchy-matchy saddle pads. <laughs> in a shocking twist of events that has rocked the equestrian community, a devoted writer has filed for divorce after her husband committed the ultimate act of betrayal, selling her beloved collection of matchy-matchy saddle pads. L let's get more into this post. In a world of equestrianism, there are few sacred things. The bond between horse and rider, the intoxicating scent of fresh hay, and of course, the perfectly coordinated ensemble of saddle pads, leg wraps, and fly veils to match the rider's clothing. For those not in the know, which is me, I am not in the know. These color-coordinated masterpieces are not just accessories. They are an equestrian's pride and joy, a symbol of their meticulous attention to detail and sartorial excellence. Enter our protagonist, Jane Doe, an avid equestrian whose love for matchy-matchy saddle pads knew no bounds. Her husband, and now ex-husband, didn't quite grasp the gravity of the situation when he decided to clear out some clutter from the tack room. In a moment of sheer madness, he sold Jane's painstakingly curated collection of saddle pads at a garage sale for a measly 50 bucks. 50 bucks. The moment Jane discovered the atrocity, her world came crashing down. It was like he sold my soul. Jane lamented, holding back tears while clutching the lone surviving saddle pad, a limited edition um, equestrian Stockholm masterpiece that narrowly escaped the garage sale massacre. He could have sold the car, the house, even the dog, and I wouldn't have cared as much. In a desperate attempt to explain his actions, Jane hu Jane's husband, John, now clearly banished to a growing pile of failed husbands, said, I thought they were just old cloths. I didn't realize they were important. This statement, now etched in the Hall of Fame of clueless spouses, was the final nail in the coffin. The, divor the divorce proceedings were swift. Jane's lawyer, also an equestrian, immediately saw the severity of the situation. This is a clear case of irre irreconcilable differences, she stated, adding that John's complete disregard for the sanctity of the matchy-matchy collection was grounds for immediate separation. The judge, an old cowboy himself, nodded in, in agreement, I'm sorry, nodded in understanding and swiftly granted the divorce. As the news spread, the equestrian community rallied around Jane. An online fundraiser was set up to help her rebuild her collection, with donations pouring in from riders far and wide. Saddle pad manufacturers even reached out, offering custom designs exclusive and exclusive collections to help with the huge loss. John, on the other hand, has been shunned. He now lives in a small apartment with minimal furniture and reportedly no color coordinated anything. He was last seen trying to understand the difference between difference between a dressage saddle and a jumping saddle, a task that, like his marriage, seems hopeless. In conclusion, let this be a lesson to all. Never underestimate the importance of a writer's matchy matchy collection. Now, <laughs> this is obviously a humorous work of fiction, but with all of the Reddits that we have read over the last however many months, we do know that husbands can disregard women's crafts, hobbies, likes, um, pets, plants, things that she loves and holds dear to. We know that they could be oblivious to the cost and the energy that it takes to obtain and keep these hobbies up and going. That's the reason why this needed to be read and why it's humorous, because we can find some humor in this knowing that somebody is this oblivious. The funny thing is, I don't know that everybody knows that this is actually a joke. I was tagged in this. Um, this person says, one of the cardinal sins of marrying or dating a horse girl. This man is lucky he's breathing, to be honest. And this is where I was tagged in this. <laughs> she says, for reference, one set with saddle pad, leg wraps, and ear net is $192. 
I have no idea. I thought this was also humorous because this way we can get a glimpse into another world that we might not be used to because I had no idea. But also equestrianism is not something that I usually look into. So let's just, you know, we can open our eyes to other people's way of living, way of being. I want to leave y'all with this. I mean, if your partner sells your stuff without ever having talked about it, then I can see that being a problem. That's just practical, real life. Don't touch people's stuff. Don't touch people's stuff. Don't just clean out people's stuff without communicating with their partner. And this person says, the beast. She should have sold his sports jerseys. And this other person says, go after his club, um, his golf clubs. Hits the deepest of pockets. Also, video games. Sell them to help declutter. People like decluttering video games, I think. (laughs) Anyways, regardless, I'm joking. Don't touch people's stuff. Jump in the comments. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. Ladies, please match the energy of your Mother's Day. Why are you going all out for these MFers who give less than two shits about you? Why are you giving energy? Match their energy. Father's Day is coming up. Did you get anything? Was your Mother's Day abysmal? It, was it a second thought for him to do something for you? Stop just giving, 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 and you're not receiving any kind of support, love, consideration, or anything. Stop this. The The thing that I say all the time, pour into the people who have poured into you, is across the board. Pour into the people that have poured into you. And we're also going to speak about reciprocity reciprocity. It's a big word, but it's very simple. You know, you give and then I receive sometimes too. Reciprocity, give and take. Okay, let's get into this post. Am I the a-hole Mother's Day? Every year I've always gotten my husband nice gifts because I'm always thinking of him. One Father's Day, I got him a Yeti cooler. This Valentine's Day, I got him a pair of $640 um, Cody James exotic Pura Chew boots. I got $7 Walmart basket hand soap which was fine. I never even thought twice about it. I told him I didn't want anything big that day. I got him leather hooey belt. I got him a leather hooey belt for his birthday. For Mother's Day, I added a list of things I wanted to the Amazon cart for him to choose from because he says I'm picky. I didn't ask for outrageous items, but he chose a $50 tanning lotion that he's going to use half the bottle of. And out out of all the ankle bracelets on the list, he chose the $9 one. The others were $19 and $30. I guess I really don't even give a sh- if I'm the a-hole in this case. I'm sitting outside crying because I feel just so appre- unappreciated. I always go above and beyond to put a smile on his face for gifts. I can't tell him, I'm sorry, I can't tell him it hurt my feelings, so I just needed someone to tell. Match energy. Stop doing this. Buy yourself something. It's your Mother's Day. Instead of spending all of these $100 on him, stop doing that. He doesn't care. Spend it on yourself. Make your own Mother's Day something that you want. Stop it. Stop doing for these people who consistently are letting you down. And why are you even staying with people who consistently are obli- oblivious to your um, your feelings. He doesn't know that you feel unappreciated. I don't get this. This is not how forever works. <laughs> not anymore. As, stop doing this. This person says, not the a-hole. Do not make any big effort for him again. Don't ever buy him anything expensive or elaborate again. Maybe then he'll understand how he's making you feel. Get him soap for Father's Day. A nice deodorant. Like, get get an expensive one. Maybe a double pack. <laughs> Somewhere Nowhere says, I actually started doing this with my ex-husband, and he actually had the audacity to act hurt when I didn't do anything anymore after five years. I asked, when was the last time um, anything was done for me for any occasion? And he couldn't remember because it had been at least eight years that he had done something. No Summer says, one year my ex did nothing for my birthday even though I'd always done something nice for him. So at his next birthday, I did nothing. Didn't even wish him a happy one. He was butthurt, but apparently I expect too much. C. Marble says, I did something similar. And when he asked, I told him, I got you exactly what you got me for mine. Him? So nothing? You nailed it in one, buddy. (laughs) This person says, this is how it's done. 
if I'm doing for someone, they are worth the effort. I know I'm worth the effort of simple reciprocity. See, the word reciprocity pops up. If they don't want to put in the effort, why should I? Exactly. Match energy. Francesca says, how do these morons get the balls to even ask? I mean, it's actually funny that they are hurt. So this person says, F, this is so my dad. He made this big speech about how my sister and I were so great for celebrating his birthday when others, aka my mom, didn't. I just looked at him and said, yeah, you're not being subtle, but um, I've been buying her gifts since I was 14. Maybe if you put some effort in for her after all the years she has for you, um, you'd have something. I'm sorry, she'd have done something. He and my sister got pissy and I just stared at them with no expression. Thank you years as a consultant with some crazy clients. I've done for my mom for years because no Christmas gifts hurts her, not him. We don't even pretend that he's been involved the last 28 years. But with no reminders, he's managed to remember Mother's Day this year. Me, me, me only says, I had a friend whose husband was the same way. She'd go all out for his birthday, Valentine's Day, Father's Day, Christmas, and she would get zip, not even a card. By year three, she was done after nothing for Valentine's and Mother's Day. When Father's Day came around, she gave him as good as she gets, nothing. She says she thinks he spent the whole day waiting for his gifts because she left the house early and was shopping. She came home hours later with stuff for herself. Their Father's Day tradition has always been a T-bone steak for dinner with all the trimmings at his favorite steakhouse. She ordered a pizza instead. Later at bedtime, she just rolled over and went to sleep and instead of her husband having his anticipated Father's Day fun time. She said the next morning he was pissed. She knew why he was mad and just ignored him. He finally blew up and ranted about his Father's Day and how unappreciated he felt. She told him, you know how, now you know how it feels. Sucks, doesn't it? This is the, this is the energy. This is the energy, <laughs> y'all. This is the energy. Match it. Matchy, matchy. Matchy, matchy all day. Stop giving to people who give you nothing. Reciprocity. Reciprocity. Stop giving. Match energy. Matchy, matchy. Jump in the comments. Let me know what you think about this one. Don't forget to like, comment, share. So this was posted in the 2X chromosome subreddit last week. She says, but I was a good wife. She says, I'm just, I guess I'm just posting this to get it out of my system and support if anyone cares. Husband has been acting different the, the last two, three weeks, not talking to me as much, no physical touch. He said he didn't know what was wrong and was working through it, said I haven't done anything. Then today, after working through it, after nine years together and four years of marriage, my husband decided to divorce me. He said he is confident our relationship won't survive having children, and he knows he wants to have children just out of nowhere. And there's nothing I can do or say that will change his mind. Why does he think this? I'm glad you asked. Because I have been depressed in the past. And he knows there is a high chance of that happening again after having a baby. He says, I've been extremely depressed over smaller things. And he knows having a child is stressful. So it would be worse. And there would be no intimacy. So he would be unhappy. Ha! I go to therapy and take medication, by the way. And he says he knows I do most of the work around the house, which I do voluntarily because he has a job with odd hours. So it wouldn't be fair to me, he says, to do most of the work and have a child. It's not like he can't can just decide to do more if that is the problem, right? Ha. And besides, he isn't happy now, he says. He needs to figure himself out, he says. Therapy wouldn't work, he says. His friends who have kids say to end it before kids are involved if he has doubts. I didn't know that there were doubts. All this time, I've been thinking that marriage is something we support, um, something where we support each other and work together and lean on each other. Funny. As Taylor Swift said, I'm pissed off I gave him my youth for free. He says I'm a good wife and I did everything right, yet now I'm 30 and going to be divorced. Isn't it funny in a sad way that he can go out and not have to worry about being able to trust someone again because I never broke his trust? How can he go and have the child he wants? Doesn't matter what age he is, how he has time to figure his life out now. 
but as a woman, I don't have all the time I want. So now there's a chance um, I will never have kids because who knows how long it'll take um, to be okay after this. Not to mention we have a house, two dogs, and a cat, and I'm living in a city with no family since I stayed here to be with him. And I just got settled into a new job I enjoy, making more money but hardly enough to survive on, on my own comfortably as I am now in this economy. Who knows what I'm going to do now, but I was a good wife. The quicker women figure out <laughs> that being a good wife, that doing everything that you're supposed to do does not matter, these people will leave you. You know, they follow their instincts. They are doers. If they decide that they're going to go out and start a whole new family, they are doers. They are going to do it regardless of the feelings that they hurt, the implications, the jobs that they destroy, the lives that they shatter. They just do it. They are doers. So women, this is the reason why I talk about things about having plans, B, C, D, E, F, G, L, M, N, O, P, because you just don't know. You just don't know. You can at, you can be the best. You can drop it down and drop it like it's hot for him and pick it up slow. You can do all the body rolling at nighttime. You can cook five course meals every single day, pack the best sandwich lunches ever. It does not matter once they get it in their brain that they're going to leave. So have a backup plan. As um as Jen Jenny from Life Takes Two, a man is not a plan. Plan for yourself. Be able to survive regardless of Mar your marital situation. Be ready to survive regardless. Be ready to take care of yourself regardless because you just never know. Now for some of the comments with other women sharing their stories. Um, this person, all work and no Yahtzee, says, my ex-husband walked out on me and our toddler aged daughter for similar reasons. I use quotes because there was a lot of blame levied at me specifically, even though I also hadn't done anything to compromise his trust. Turns out he'd been having multiple affairs and ended up leaving for one of his, his affair partners and thought it would be an easier exit to simply blame me for 100% of his decision. It took me a while to figure out he'd been unfaithful. And until I did, he was happy laying the blame completely at my feet as though he wasn't the one cheating. You could write a book on cognitive dissidence he performed. Here's all the ways I dislike you but you have no reason or right to think I'm the bad guy here. Ultimately, the trash taking itself out is a good thing, even though it doesn't feel like it when it's happening. I feel a sense of relief that I can go into another relationship knowing I'm a good partner. Okay, Forestly responds, I know someone whose husband also walked out on the wife and her two daughters, asked for a divorce as soon as he started having an affair. The mistress didn't want anything to do with him though, so he blew up his family unit for nothing in the end. When he tried to run to her after she dumped him, he still blames his wife for leaving him to other people, though, and not giving him a second chance, despite his cheating, when he is the one who started pushing for the divorce before the cheating was even found out. I think his reason was similar BS to just deciding five years in he didn't want to be a dad anymore and wants to be a free man. That's what he told her. Super BS. Immediately started asking for kids from the next woman he dated. These men don't understand that if they have a woman at home and then they start cheating, the affair partner is getting the benefit of having the wife at home because she's still the one that is supporting him and doing the foundational things that make him kind of attractive. Once he has to live life as an adult alone, he's not as attractive because he's not going to have the time and energy to give to that affair partner. So affair partners still need that wife. Once you leave, you're not the same man. Okay, the person at the bottom says, that is so effed up, especially that last bit. Imagine treating kids like some sort of relationship accessory or what society would say about a woman who just wanted to peace out of motherhood and go screw another man. Exactly. We already know that men can just drop babies in people in households and just leave and barely have a blip in their life. It's just a slight inconvenience. Boots by the Door says, it seems like here on Reddit, there are so many men at least saying they are willing to leave or divorce their wives who have just given birth or just have young children over the most insanely minor 
one way for the OP to look at it is this, is she could end up in that situation. I do think the OP's husband has either, um, it has been either cheating or wanting to for a while, and maybe he just found out that is an option or acting on it. He thinks he's letting her down even, um, easy, I'm sorry. Darkness says he's lying to her. Any letting down easy would be followed by anger when the truth comes out, as it always does. When his new baby is announced seven months after he left, for instance. Yeah, these stories are very, very typical. It keeps happening. That's the reason why it's easy to fill in the blanks of this story or write the ending of this story because we've seen these stories play out. And that's the wild thing about really pushing marriage for women so much is that we know how it ends with some of these people. That's the reason why women should be able to survive or should work to survive regardless of marital status. Jump in the comments. Let me know what you think about this one. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.